Alright, welcome back guys. In this video we're starting to talk about stress and strain in the elastic range due to pure bending. So this is what we were left over with from the last video where we, uh, we basically looked at this prismatic member that was subjected to pure bending and we, uh, we defined all the geometry of the problem and we kind of figured out that for, uh, for when we have a positive moment like this developing, a positive internal moment, that stuff above the neutral axis gets shorter and stuff below the neutral axis gets longer and that's going to introduce some uh, some longitudinal normal stresses and strains and stuff so um, we want to talk about how to derive the formulas for some of those things right now so when we look at the neutral axis um, so this was line EF Right, this line EF, it's passing through the centroid of the cross section. Uh, we figured that the length of the length of EF uh, was equal to the it's an arc length, right? It's rho times theta. Rho times theta. When we look at any other plane of interest that we've just kind of arbitrarily called C D, well we want to figure out for C D. We want to figure out what is LCD, uh, and this is also an arc length, and the distance to CD, uh, because CD is a distance of Y away from the neutral axis, so the radius to the center of the curvature is just rho minus Y. So we have rho minus Y, and then it's an arc length, so it's just times theta, and that's going to give us the length of that. So uh, we know that uh, at any point that's not, or any plane that's not on the neutral axis is going to be deforming. So in this case, uh, it follows that the deformation uh, of CD, the change in length basically, is, is going to be equal to LCD minus L. Right, just the change in length. And uh, I know that LCD is going to be shorter because it's in compression and this is going to give us a negative answer and that's perfect, that's what we're looking for. So when we just plug in our values here, LCD was rho minus y times theta, so we can just expand that out. So we're going to get rho theta minus y theta and, and minus L. Well, L it was just, uh, I guess we could call that EF, but LEF was, was really just equal to the original L. Uh, so this was just minus rho times theta. All right, so rho theta minus rho theta, uh, those cancel out, and we're left with the, the delta here. Delta CD is equal to negative y theta. And this actually is the expression for the deformation of any line uh, looking at the, at the side view here. Uh, and it, it, we could have placed CD anywhere. We could have placed CD up here. We could have placed CD here. Uh, we could have even placed it below, it doesn't even matter, uh, where we define, if we define a positive y as going up like this from the neutral axis or, you know, radially inwards, then this would be a negative y. And that will return us this negative value that we expect when we're dealing in the regions um, above the neutral axis, and it would give us the positive value when we're dealing with uh, regions down here below. Uh, when that's good because negative just in, uh, shows us that it's in compression and positive shows us that it's in tension so that makes sense to us. But that's just deformation so what we really want to talk about is strain. So if we remember that, let's write it up here, strain is just equal to deformation over the original length. Um, well the deformation here, we can write the strain at you know, any point um, deformation, because CD could have been any line, the, the deformation here is negative Y theta, and this is over L, and L is just rho theta, right? L is equal to L is equal to rho theta. Those thetas are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with just strain here is just equal to negative Y over rho. And obviously, the further we go away from the neutral axis, the more strain we're going to be getting. Uh, it's, so if we, uh, if we just max this out, then our, our max strain is just going to be C over rho, where C is the distance here. And uh, we can talk about, we can talk about like the maximum, or we can talk about like the max tensile strain and the max compressive strain. Uh, in this case, like this distance here would be C for, uh, for compression and this distance from here would actually be our C value for, for tension. So just watch out for that. 
And also, um, just like the other strain videos that we did, uh, when we're seeing these expressions, the one last expression that we can write is that strain at some point is equal to, uh, you know, at some point away from the neutral axis is just equal to negative y over c times the, the max strain. And again, we were seeing this expression in the previous videos on axial strain. And now because of Hooke's law where we have um, the, the axial stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain, then the longitudinal normal stresses that we're getting also vary linearly with the distance from the neutral axis. And uh, we can just write those expressions as uh, the, the stress here is just going to be negative the internal moment times y over the moment of inertia. And uh, the other way that we can obviously, if this is the, the stress, then the stress, the max stress, is just going to be m times c over i. And again, you can have maximum stress, like the absolute maximum stress, uh, or you can also have maximum compressive and maximum uh, tensile stress. And this is important too, because when we start dealing with concrete beams, uh, they're very weak in tension. So the, if it's just something to pay attention to that you'll you'll be interested in the maximum compressive and the maximum tensile stresses. And uh, same thing as with this expression and that we've been seeing in the previous videos, um, we can write this other expression for stress where we just have uh, stress is equal to negative y over c times the maximum stress. And, uh, and these formulas that we're looking at here, uh, we just call those the elastic flexure formulas. So those are pretty important formulas that you'll basically see in any textbook on this sort of thing. Um, the other formula that you will see and you'll be using in these types of problems is, uh, is 1 over rho is equal to m over ei. And I uh, just want to show you where this formula comes from. It doesn't come out of nowhere. So if we look at this expression here, uh, we, we figured out that the max strain is equal to C over rho. Well, we can just reorganize this a little bit. We'll bring rho over. So rho is going to be equal to C over the max strain. And uh, we can also, here, let's put in some little arrows to show where we're going here. Uh, we can we can start trying to get there, so we'll invert that side, and then uh, we'll do the same to the other side. So we have E M over C. But if you also remember from Hooke's law here, where we have stress is equal to E uh, modulus of, modulus of elasticity times strain. Well, if we just drop in some subscripts there for E max or if max stress and max strain then max strain is equal to the maximum stress over E. So what we can do is we can bring that into our expression here. So we're getting one over rho is equal to the max stress. We'll bring that, uh, that E down, so we'll get over E C. And if we look here, we have this sigma max now, st max stress. Well, we have an expression here from our, from our elastic flexure formulas where the max stress is equal to mc over i. So if we, uh, maybe we'll just continue down here. We get one over rho is equal to, well, let's plug all that stuff in on the top. So we get mc, we'll bring the i into the bottom, and then we had ec. Well, those c's are just gonna cancel out, and then we'll be left with one over rho is equal to m over ei. And this is a super useful formula here uh, that you'll be that we'll be seeing in uh, in other videos, and you'll be using this lots in mechanics of materials to solve problems for pure bending. And uh, that's just where it comes from, in case you were curious.